Hello, baby. Hello. Hello, Ray. Billiam, you're early. Got the email jumped on. Monday Mondays with Bill is just a somber, crabby experience. <laughs> Said cunty wrong. Oh, uh, shit. My apologies. You're, you're all right. I'm on vacation soon, so a few more days. Dude, we're it's counting like, it down. It's like Tuesdays with Maury's, except with a big fat cunt instead of... <laughs> nah. Uh. Yeah. Did you work yeah. today, Bill? Yeah. God, you look like shit. Yeah, you look terrible. It looks like you <laughs> had a day off today. That's why I'm like, wow. Uh, rough day yesterday. Yeah, to say the least. Yeah. Draft hey. day. It's a holiday. Big league draft. And just, oh, how'd uh, you do? How'd you do? Well, I did okay. No one fucking cares. <laughs> I think I did okay. <laughs> Fantasy football draft season is in play and can't wait to hear about Bill's results for the season um, in 30-second interim before we tell him we don't fucking care. <laughs> no, we'll check out, his, ch- check, out, no, check out his blog he wrote on com about his fantasy football picks. <laughs> yeah, that one came out. <laughs> <laughs> that one's stuck in drafts. So it's not out yet, people. No, he's taking his shit and he's doing it all on his uh, notes on his phone and he's going to send it to you and say, hey, Rich, I got a good one for you. Print this one out. <laughs> There isn't a single period in here. <laughs> Just a long rundown sentence. The grammar guru would be <laughs> most disappointed. Most disappointed. No periods, no commas, nothing. Take a breath, period, bitch. I don't need to take breaths. So I'm not fat. Well, good for you. Good for you. Ray doesn't breathe. He wheezes. <laughs> <laughs> On to the next breath. It's all just... One after the other. Just take it one breath at a time there, Wheezy. Uh, Is that Dawbot hitting jacks? Yeah, baby. Oh, God. You have that in the background? <laughs> yeah, my bad. Welcome to the Supermind Sports Show. Fat Tuesday edition, August 31st. If you're watching on YouTube, please subscribe, rate, review. If you're listening on the podcast, wherever you get your podcast, do the same. Rate, review, uh, repeat. Tell your friends. Welcome to the Simple Minds Sports Show. Irene. Okay, big news. We don't do this very often. We're, we're going to do a uh, live cut-in of the Fat Tuesday show, which was recorded last night. I'm recording this now uh, Tuesday morning, uh, directly after the news that Cam Newton was cut by the New England Patriots. Uh, really shocking. Actually, very shocking. I mean, the whole sentiment around the quarterback position uh, this season was that Mac Jones was the better quarterback in camp, had earned his spot as a starting quarterback, but still would not get that starting role for one reason or another. I wrote a blog on it, actually, at SimpleMindSports.com. Cam Newton will be the quarterback, and here's the reasons why, reasons one through four. Uh, Eventually, we all thought that Mac would get in somewhere down the line in the season. Uh, Cam would either have a COVID problem or be injured. Uh, Mac Jones would finally be ready in the eyes of Bill Belichick, either physically or mentally. Well, uh, that seems to have come a lot sooner than we expected, uh, a.k.a. two weeks before the season starts. Uh, The releasing of Cam Newton is not terribly surprising if he wasn't going to be the starter. Uh, I did not think of him as a backup quarterback, and clearly he didn't or Bill didn't or both. I have to imagine with the relationship that him and Belichick had with Cam Newton and Belichick that there was an understanding there if Cam Newton was not going to be the starter that he'd be released and uh, be a free agent for a team that may need a starter down the line uh, due to injury or or whatever else. Uh, You know, we know my opinion on this. I don't think he's a starting quarterback in the NFL anymore, but uh, teams do get desperate and injuries do happen. So there may be an opportunity that pops up for him. Uh, I'll say this about Cam Newton off the field. And as a, a teammate, he seemed to uh, fit most of the, uh, of the bills. He's, he was a lot more um, engaging and uh, self-deprecating and uh, you know took a lot on. Uh, it, it was better than I thought. And I think a lot of people thought, and he should be commended for that. He did have a couple COVID problems that hurt his team and uh, that shouldn't go unnoted either. And uh, he sucked on the field. Let's call it what it is. And now it's the Mac Jones era, the number one, the number 15 pick overall. 
uh, first round quarterback is going to get his chance to play. And he looked like he could fit the part. Uh, you're going to look at an offense that's going to be running the ball mostly, uh, a lot of play action. But uh, look, let's call it what it is. Mac Jones is going to be able to run the offense that Josh McDaniels wants him to run, uh, that Kim Newton couldn't. And uh, clearly, Mac Jones did enough in the preseason and in training camp to earn that position over Cam Newton. And uh, proof is in the pudding. Bye bye, Cam. Thanks for everything. On to the show. Bobby D hitting bombs. That'll make the nerds happy. That's for sure. That'll make them happy. You know what I bet he was fueled up by? White Birch Brewing, best craft brewing in New Hampshire, down in National New, National New Hampshire. Ray address, please. 460 Amherst Street. Good side of Amherst Street. Get on down, get yourself a flight, get yourself a pint. Uh, get the best rainbow flight in New Hampshire. Uh, sours, IPAs, stouts, whatever you want. If you can't get to the brewery, get it at your local beer store. Wherever you get it, tell them the Simple Minds boys sent you white birch brewing. Uh, the Red Sox are on. They start their four-game stint with the Rays. Big series here. As much as we've been shitting on them since the deadline, they are in the playoffs right now. Uh, this is a big series with the Rays. We'll get to them, spend a little bit of time on them, but we're going to be a lot of Patriots uh, this evening, obviously, as preseason game number three wrapped up last night. We got two weeks till the season opener. All eyes are clearly on the quarterback position, although I think that they should be moving elsewhere because that's pretty much settled. Um you know, we can get to it. Did anything stand out to you? I was watching this game and basically my, my, my only thought was I'm not learning anything from this. Nothing else popped. Well, I take that back. I found out that a couple guys sucked and JJ Taylor is awesome. That's what I, that's what I found out. Other than that, not a whole lot was learned today uh, in that game. I'm sorry. Henry Anderson finally showed up, had a couple nice plays off the line against third, second and third stringers. Yeah, They're still playing deep into the game, too. So, yeah, I feel like he's on a roster bubble. They're making some of those guys available, too, for trades. Some of these... Belichick had some really nice things to say about him just this past week. I don't know if we yeah. should pump his tires to I've... get him like in a good mood for the game, but. I've read, read a few, like, roster projections today that all had him kind of on there. And I think it's just based on his salary. But, I mean, if you're you're trying to make the team and you're in the third, fourth quarter of the last preseason game, that's usually never a good sign. They usually, especially a guy like that making coming in three million bucks. Well, J.J. Taylor was. J.J. Taylor was. And he I was going to say, I, I guess that's true. But if you look at that front seven, they're stacked. Like the depth on that. Yeah, no, they're, they're, they're trying the to trade guy guys. The they're fucking, they're, they're stacked. They're trying to trade guys right now because they're, they're letting guys know because they know they can't keep everybody. Yeah. Yeah. It's not a bad move. Um, so we can get to that. If you want to touch on that a little bit more, I thought that the secondary was trash. Um, you know, no JC Jackson out there, obviously no Gilmore, no McCordy. The starters weren't out there, but good God, did Michael Jackson, he, he looked like a pile of that guy did that, that, that was exposed, uh, in that number one cornerback spot. And he played deep in the game and kept getting exposed the whole game. He stunk. He you know, stunk Williams so too. He did too. Joe Jawal yeah, Williams. Bye bye. He Ooh. fucking blows. Yeah. Um, the Wade kid that they traded for got beat uh, for a touchdown. Off that should have been offensive PI, but looked okay. Uh, he should factor in. They just traded for him. He's not going to get cut. Uh, we can get to that too. I, I want to start with the quarterbacks though to get it out of the way. All right. So Cam Newton had his two series. Um, he looked like Cam Newton. Uh, anybody. Look, Cam Newton's going to be the starter. Bill Belichick came out and said, we haven't made the decision yet. It's bullshit. Cam Newton's going to be a starter. He was treated like a starter all preseason. He wasn't uh, reprimanded whatsoever for his COVID protocols. Mac Jones did everything asked of him, was the better quarterback in the quarterback competition in camp, but he's not going to start. And there's a couple reasons for it. I actually did write a blog on it and SuperMindSports.com today on the website. If you want to check it out, we can get into it. But we have in the past, either he's not ready physically, mentally, they want to give him some more time to, to ramp up as a rookie quarterback their schedule is soft to start the season they think they can win it with cam under center scoring 20 points their defense is loaded they think they can keep teams under around 20 points uh and cam newton will eventually expose himself either to covid or to the fact that he still sucks and eventually it's going to be max team not week one it's 100 percent uh cam newton that being said uh, do you disagree and your thoughts on uh, i don't know cam newton starting the season this year did you see anything in his I think it was like six possessions in the preseason that uh, that makes you think he could be a little bit better to start the year in the first half of the season. Go ahead, Billiam. No, you can go first. 
Uh, I think it's the same old Cam. Uh, check down Cam. I mean, he had a born wide open on that play that he threw to Jacoby Myers, the double coverage interception, bad throw. Uh, it's the same old Cam. He just doesn't look like he's one of the elite quarterbacks in the league. He looks like he's in the bottom tier of the league for quarterbacks. Uh, if Mac Jones can't be healthy all year, if that's what Belichick's worried about because of the 17 game season, I'm for it. It looked like uh, San Francisco is going to try to pull something like that with the Jimmy G experiment and Trey uh, uh, Lance thing going on with the dual quarterback finger yeah but that that's what's going to be the play though they're going to have dueling quarterbacks coming in for certain scenarios i think that's what belichick's going to do i think mcdaniels likes that scenario best so at least matt can get some on-field play this year but that's probably what's going to happen phil can i speak to that a little bit before you get into your thoughts on cam newton yeah you know, go for it he, he go for it eyes are closing it's fine i'll take it uh firstly on the two quarterback thing for the patriots it, it's not hap- It's not going to be a hunky dory situation. I don't see it uh, happening either. It's not going to be a saint situation. Like if Mac gets the job, Mac gets the job. And if Cam Newton decides to stick around, then they'll drop a couple plays in the red zone or whatever to, to, to have some gadget plays, but he's not getting Taysom Hill snaps. He's not getting double digit snaps in the, it's not going to be a he's not getting tight committee. end snaps either. No, he's not coming on for as a tight end. Look, he couldn't run last year. Did anyone, am I going fucking crazy? Did anyone watch the games last year? He couldn't run. His main asset was a power runner. He could get one yard whenever he needed it, except against Seattle and Buffalo, where he fumbled one away in the first one he tripped over his own feet. Other than that, he can pretty much get a yard for you. But you have Ramadama Ding Dong now, so you don't even need him for that. But the double quarterback thing, get it out of your mind. It's not happening. It's just not happening. If Matt gets the job, Josh McDaniels is not putting Cam Newton in there seven, eight, nine, ten times a, day, a game to run some fucking wild card, wildcat. No, that's not happening. And then real quick on the Jimmy G thing, how bad did that guy fuck up? We said all along when when the Trey Lance or Mac Jones was going to San Francisco, that San Francisco had for two years has basically said they don't want Jimmy. The Patriots were clamoring to get him. Jimmy should make himself get himself out of San Francisco, force a trade out of there because this guy's going to get, it's going to take his job. And it's exactly what's happening. They did Jimmy Garoppolo dirty and he did well, himself dirty by taking the money and staying there. Cause he's going to be on the bench come week two or three. Uh, is that true though? On. Because you're making $25 million to sit on the bench. It should. Uh-oh. It's his last. Yeah. It, 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 Fun fucking- fact though. If they cut him today, uh, they don't owe him any money. It's guaranteed if he's on the roster tomorrow at four o'clock. So that, that salary They're comes get guaranteed. Are you They're, talking like today is in Monday or today today is in Tuesday? Whatever whatever day it is, Monday. Today's Monday. Now we're recording. <laughs> so by four o'clock tomorrow, that's when his salary comes. They're not Trey, Trey Lance. Him. Trey Lance, I think, he's got a broken finger. He broke yeah, something bone, in his no, his bone chip in his uh, finger. Yeah. Oh, what a yeah, pussy. And what however people you know, I don't bitch. take people taking pants off for Trey Lance. It, Go kind of take a look at the way he played. Ooh, not great. I did, I not was great. high on Lance for a long time, and I sour on him quick. He played. He's played two games in like a year and a half. Yeah, man. It's and like, one double and, A. And, and now you're gonna go try to start for the San Francisco 49ers. Kyle Shanahan's a fucking idiot, dude. Good you luck. mortgage. You mortgage your future to move up for one double A, like Carson Wentz as quarterback. This is exactly what's gonna happen. He's and got a bone. Of, he's got a bone chip on his finger. He's out fucking two weeks. It's already started. It's already putting, starting. Instead of putting him in a training program and, and bringing him along after not playing football for two years. You're already souring on your starting quarterback that took you to a Super Bowl a couple years ago. You're already creating a rift there. It, it's going to end badly there, and I have no sympathy for Jimmy. He should have forced his way out when he could, and now if he gets cut, whatever, fine, but he's not going to because – would have the same situation in New England, him and Mac, but, you know, we wanted to try oh, to force – No way. I think they, t- I think they well, take If Mac. they brought Jimmy Garoppolo into New England, Mac Jones would have been his ass on the bench. It would have been Jimmy's show – for the no, least I the know. Next two no, years. what I'm saying is you would have Jimmy and Mac. I mean, that's a good one two tandem. Like, you're not going to do what the San Francisco 49ers do with Trey Lance. Like, you're coming no, in. Oh, yeah. No, it would have been He's coming position. in to start. Right. Where with the 49ers, you know, they trade up to number three, and you're like, oh, shit. Like, he could start, and you're already seeing it now with this dual quarterback shit. If Jimmy comes to New England, <laughs> he, he's guaranteed to get the Jimmy Garoppolo treatment. Yeah. On Definitely. Mac Jones, he's sitting a, behind a minimum of two years. Guarantee it. It's a Guarantee feather. It. It's a feather bed, and Bill's feeding him grapes for as long as he wants. He gets the Cam Newton treatment because that's what if you have a healthy now. Jimmy Garoppolo this year, you're fighting for Buffalo for the division. I mean, you're fighting for a bye. Yeah, do you think you're that good? 
Wow. Depends on you, think, you think they're that good with Jimmy G? I think I it depends think, on defense. The AFC, so. is not as, the AFC doesn't have a lot of competition. Uh, I had, healthy I, Gilmore and a healthy Jimmy Garoppolo on this team. You're, I mean, you're a top five defense, right? Yeah, and, with you, and you just Jones and you just yeah, sure. and you loaded up on um, Jimmy Garoppolo's strengths, running the ball and two tight end sets. We're in the weeds. We're Kittle, in the weeds. So. Jimmy Garoppolo is not coming here. Cam Newton is here, Bill. He's starting week one. Uh, you see anything out of out of him in the preseason to give you a shred of confidence uh, going in with everything I said before: the schedule, the defense, the team, the the new pass catchers, shall we say, which we've seen little of in the preseason. Do you have? Any confidence in Cam Newton himself, not the team, but Cam Newton himself can look like a competent quarterback here in the first several weeks before we all think Mac Jones eventually gets the job one way or another. No, the <laughs> offense was, I mean, <laughs> but no, truthfully, like the offense was just so vanilla with Cam in there. You know, you didn't see any of the option plays. You didn't see any like design runs. He never run, ran the football, you know, and you, you saw him get his two series a game and then and kind of be out. You didn't really see anything. This off like in the pre at all. He didn't show you anything. Period. Game tape, nothing. It was so vanilla offense. When you saw a difference in Mac Jones, they kind of opened up the offense. But I don't know if they're trying to hide Cam Newton. Like I there, I they it I just, just seems to that. me that it, it seems, seems like yeah. Yeah, it just seems because like obviously you're trying to keep him healthy. I get it with the extra game this year, so you're not gonna try to run him like you're doing. I I, I I'm pretty sure we're going to see some of that in the regular season, but still, it's like, it's kind of weird that you ran just as such a puke vanilla dog shit <laughs> offense with the, or in the game. And then you gave Mac more of the range. You saw Mac with the hurry up. You saw Mac, like no huddle. You saw all that shit, but you never saw that with Cam. It was handoff, handoff, couple throws, handoff, handoff, couple throws, Philadelphia game. He had one great drive. He was seven, eight and boom, done. Yeah, I um I don't know if they're uh, hiding him as much as they know what they have with him and they know his limitations and they pretty much understand. It just what seems the like they're trying to get him game reps, truthfully. Yeah, it seems like they, they know what the floor is. I, I honestly looked at it throughout the pre- preseason from game number one that they wanted to get a real look at Mac Jones, but they couldn't start him. They couldn't get him a, a truly against the one. That's why but that sucks, know, too. Well, sucks. you know, I, I, I think Bill's mentioned – sorry, I don't mean to cut you off, but he's mentioned – um, getting the joint practices. So right. that, that, that one day against the Giants, number one defense where he went, what, 24, 28, where 18 straight completions or whatever it was like, that's, that's sitting in his mind because that's like, I mean, it's not game reps, but that's still number one reps against a, a real number one defense in the NFL. I mean, he that's taken, he couldn't start, but he got lucky with cam coming out. Well, or if you want to go, uh, fuck me, I'm a loser in my conspiracy theory, Bill Belichick, <laughs> let Cam Newton go, miss the five days. So he could see Mac Jones against the ones against the Giants. And again, in that preseason game, Mac Jones' first series against the ones, uh, the Giants' first team defense, at least most of them. So, and that was all preseason. I, I think that it was by design. We know what the floor is with Cam and the ceiling is basically the, the floor with him. Uh, we don't need to see a whole lot, but we do want to see Mac because I think we're going to need him. And if he's as good as he has kind of looked behind closed doors, then shit, we might go to him. So let's try and get him as much like real game action in the preseason. And even if it's a series or two against the ones on the other team, we'll, we'll pull cam early and put Mac in there so we can see what that looks like. And that game, he was playing with his second string offensive line, second string receivers. And um, I thought, you know, I thought struggled a little bit there took held the ball a couple of times and took some bad sacks, but you know, overall, he, he was um, Mac Jones, which didn't get to a second. Let me finish my thought on Cam Newton. The idea, here's Cam Newton in a nutshell. That pass that got picked off that Jacoby Myers, you know, let be ripped away from him. Um, I don't, one way or another, look, it's Tampa 2. That's probably where you go with the ball. We've seen Brady make that throw a thousand times. It wasn't placed perfectly. He could have let him a little bit more, but you had the safety coming over. Bourne. You know, if you throw him an off sh- you know, back shoulder, maybe he complete that. But he wasn't wide open for a touchdown. He had safety over the top. Plus, he was getting pressure in his face. Plus, it was a third and long. I didn't hate it. It wasn't a good throw. It was a Cam Newton throw. This is my whole point. You're never going to be in a situation with Cam Newton and go, holy shit, what a throw. It's, it's not always, accurate enough. It's always going to be the conversation of was that a good throw or was that a bad throw? That's Cam Newton's, that's Cam Newton's floor and Cam Newton's ceiling. Like he had one good throw to Jacoby Myers, which he kind of slung out there in space as kind of a last ditch effort. He's always a half tick behind. He doesn't know how to anticipate. You look back at Mac Jones to the ball. He had a deep in 20 yard in route. On a, I think it was a third down to Wilkerson who came back to it. The ball's out before Wilkerson's making his break. That, that 
very Cam can't do rarely that. happens with Cam Newton. He's a read and react quarterback. He always has been. He doesn't have the technical men, uh, mentality as a quarterback to run their offense. That's right. Patriots know that. <laughs> I know. Call me Zoe. The Patriots know that. And I think that they're gearing up for, for Mac Jones. That's why we saw so little of Cam Newton. It's run and run and run, 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 run until Mac Jones gets his opportunity in midseason to late season. And for what it's worth, I think Mac Jones has scored on like eight out of 10 drives. And it would have been result- like 12 out of 10 if his receivers could catch the fucking ball. 12 out of 10. Good math. <laughs> dumb, dumb. And that I was think the joke, you idiots. Good. And, and, and one, one was a kneel down, and I think one was a punt. So. I mean, you've seen it, but again, it, he's carved up the, the threes and the fours. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, pro football focus had him as the highest rated rookie quarterbacks, which is a lauded rookie quarterback class with Jones, Zach Wilson, Trevor Lawrence, Justin Fields, and Trey Lance. Jones came out with a 92.2 rating. Zach Wilson was second with the Jets at 85.7. Lawrence was 78.3. Fields, 67.6. And Trey Lance with 56.7. Mac Jones, just a little tidbit here uh, to compare to Tom Brady's preseason uh, numbers. Mac Jones had 36 out of 52 completions. Good for 69 completion percentage. Nice. 389 yards, nice. one touchdown, should have been 12 out of 10 touchdowns, and a 97.4 quarterback rating. Tom Brady, 32 out of 52, 61 and a half completion percentage, 360 yards, and uh, just the one touchdown, good for 88.7. Am I saying he's Tom Brady? No, I'm just saying uh, he's better than him. <laughs> <laughs> Honest question, real quick, keep it cool because I know we've been talking about it. Have you been impressed with Mac Jones more so than maybe you thought you would be uh, coming into this preseason Uh, and be honest, don't be anti cam. And just because cam is so bad that Mac has looked good. Do you on, are you honestly impressed with Mac Jones and looking forward to his future as the uh, franchise quarterback for the Patriots? Yes, because he was the last quarterback picked out of this loaded uh, draft class. So they didn't think he really had it. He was an Alabama guy, thought it was a system kind of quarterback, you know, always having the great targets coming in here. He's been looking pretty good with the twos and threes going up, you know, having good uh, chemistry with Devin Asiasi now. Uh, I would really like to see him go with the ones and see what he can do with Hunter Henry and uh, John U. Smith, stuff like that. But obviously we haven't seen that yet. But, yeah, I'm pretty impressed with what we've got going on. Well, I mean, my expectations went up because, you know, I didn't think you – I expected a quarterback not ready for prime time this year. You know, and I think he's he's ticked up a notch lately, and I think you you could see kind of see why you heard the rumors that he was one of the most ready ones besides Trevor Lawrence coming out of the draft, and there was rumors that he was going to go to three to San Francisco. So you're kind of seeing that now. You know, I, I always expected Cam to start the season week one, but I mean, you know, the thought had to be there with Jones, and I didn't expect that this coming out in the training camp. Again, like you said, Ray, it was more like system generated. You know, I, I just didn't see him kind of get in the offense this quickly. So, I mean, it's, think, he's Bill, made, I think, didn't think him okay, – hold on. I, let me sum it up. I don't think I, – I did not expect him to make a real a legitimate push for the number one job. I did not expect that going into camp. I expected Cam to solidify it and, boom, be done with it. But, like, now it looked like a real real competition. Go ahead. What was your question? I was going to ask, do you think Belichick – did he surprise – thank you. Thank you, Queen. Uh, do you think uh, – he surprised Belichick and did it change Belichick's approach to the quarterback this season in terms th- of uh, looking yeah. at maybe getting him in a little bit sooner than he thought. I, th- I think so. You know, I, I still expect Cam to really be the whole season as starter, but I mean, Bill's got to think about it, honestly, just the way he's played in the, in the preseason and, and especially against the, the joint practice against the giants when he was shredding the number one defense. Yes. It would have been nice to see him go up against the number one defense. You've seen him struggle a little bit against the Patriots number one defense when he's had those number one reps in the last couple of weeks too. So, I mean, you, you really like to see how he's going to stack up. I mean, he's still, again, it, you're good against twos and threes. You know, what can you really do against, you know, the number ones? And that's what we really need to see. So I'm hoping, the hope is to get him in there, but I, I still expect them to, you know, Cam to start the rest of the year. My question, though, is real quick, is who the players want to start week one? There's a lot of respect coming from Mac, it sounds like. Just That's what I, was, what I was going to say. Yeah, it seems like everyone wants Mac to be the quarterback. It's, I mean, obviously, Patriots don't really let that out. But, you know, some beat reporters are saying, you know, they're the guys rallying around Mac instead of Cam. You know, this used to be Cam's locker room because he was that guy with all the respect. He's That's been coming from McDaniels. Yeah. Guarantee you know, it. 
You know what? I, it's a good segue here to this point that I wanted to make, right? Is, is, and it had to do with the end of the game and the, the new kid we mentioned on the top, um, Sean Wade, who was traded for from um, Baltimore. No, not him yet. Gave up, the, uh, gave up the touchdown, but then made the play on the two-point conversion essentially to win the game. And the whole defensive unit, starters and all, were 50 yards down the field and you know jumped on the field to congratulate the third-teamers and the scrubs were going to get cut. Uh, Adrian Colbert, who first, first oh, player cut on this team, he had a bad game. Uh, but to your point of you know losing the locker room, who does the lock? I think that this team, this team looks and sounds connected, like a team? united. They sound like a team. They sound like they're there for each other. It's Cam Newton's Ew. biggest strength. It's Put Cam some respect. Newton. Put some respect on that Super Bowl, please. Well, no, I'm just saying because they came out as a team, the first uh, NFL team to ever come out as a team, not individually. Like yeah. it's a more uh, all right, fuck me. God all right, yep. Damn yep. it. Sorry. Don't all right. Fucking... Yep. It's a mute. God, you're so bring up, oh, I'm talking about a preseason move that, that I think the team uh, is a united group this year. And I think Cam Newton does have something to do with that. So back to your question, who does, the, who does the team want? I don't think, I, I don't think the locker room really cares. I think they want to win. And I think that they'll make it very clear who will give them the better chance at winning if they start losing on the field. And obviously by that, I mean, if Cam Newton looks like Cam Newton last year, very quickly, those rumblings for Mac Jones will start making their way out because oh, dude, Jones, be about half time in week one, <laughs> expect that <laughs> learning curve to continue to go for Mac Jones, because that's his uh, reputation and pedigree. And um, like I said, the floor is the ceiling for Cam Newton. He was the 31st ranked quarterback last year. We should see an uptick in that, but that's not going to get you top 15. And it's What's just an uptick. Not the be 30th good. ranked. Yeah, exactly. Anybody, but Geno Smith, baby. If, Anybody if he doesn't, Gino. if he doesn't score a touchdown on his first drive, I'm calling for Mac. Fair enough. <laughs> you heard it here first. Okay. Uh, I don't want to get into the bubbles because we're, we're late on the Patriots here. Um, uh, There's some breaking Patriots kind of news. Okay. Uh, the darling, the Super Bowl darling, Malcolm Butler is going to retire. Okay. Oh, he's oh. interesting. You have what to interrupt he... us for Malcolm Butler. Come yeah. on, guy. Read the room. Dealing with personal issues, and he's going to retire from the NFL. Oh God, I can't wait till that book comes out. This is the I reason can't, why that's the reason. Benched. I want to hear it. That's the, that's the best part. Where do you go, Western Alabama? He, he yeah. was undrafted because of no. Bill Buffalo. went to West. Bill went to Western Alabama. Remember that interview we had? Right. Um, yeah. Okay. Well, hopefully everything's okay. With Malcolm Butler. Thanks for the Super Bowl. Um, uh, speaking of cuts and, and not coming back, Bill gave us a surprise cut. We're late here. So I'm going to stick with that for years, Bill, unless you insist on giving us another one. Um, and, uh, Henry Anderson, maybe being cut Ray, you got a surprise cut that we wouldn't see coming. I guarantee this is going to suck. Okay. No, I don't, I don't have one. Okay. Um, uh, just because you set it up like that. I don't have one. Fair <laughs> enough. My, my question is that D line, and maybe this isn't a surprise too, because this is kind of deep, but the Bill Murray and Carl Davis are two guys that they Bill love Murray's on that D line cut. Did he get cut today? Yeah, I did see that. Okay. Yeah, here's my surprise. He, it already happened. I'll give you another gone. surprise. Anthony Jennings. Yeah. I, I've actually seen a couple roster projections. You know, he's been in and out. I, Barely played last year. He's missed a lot of camp this year, and you might want to cut just cut the court. He can't, he, he, dude. He, what do you have? Blown ACLs coming out of Alabama. Like he's just, yeah, you're he too, you're too deep. Up. Maybe you can just do what you did with Baltimore and kind of ship him around for a shitty draft pick. You just traded a fifth and a seventh, really, for what? Who's the guy? Wade. Wade. Yeah. Wade. Sean Wade. So I mean, it's a nice he, little player. Yeah, he's. A, I mean, he's. A, he's better than. Well, I don't know what he is. We don't know what he it's is. A slot but I'll tell corner. You he's going to be your slot corner. He projects him to play in the slot, which is Jonathan Jones' insurance because he's been banged up a lot too. Um, Did Nixon get cut? Or yes. Nixon was Trey Nixon was cut. Gone. Um, Suck it, Ray. He'll he'll be a practice squad guy. Yeah, he's he'll a be practice a, squad guy. He'll make it on the team at some point. Gunnar Oshevsky's look like shit, and he's an injury. He might get cut too. That might be a surprise cut. Is so, Gunner. So Ken uh, Chris Wilkerson, Isaiah Zuber, who made some plays in last night's game, and Gunnar Oshevsky are battling for that called fourth or fifth wide receiver spot. I, Nikhil Harry, they have to IR, uh, which means that one of those guys is going to have to clear waivers to get him back on the team. And I don't. Th- Matt, I don't think Zuber. I think he's gone. Matt Lacoste is another guy. I, my point is here. All these names. Uh, I'll give you the secondary two: Michael Jackson, D. Virgin, nice, D'Angelo uh, Russell, and Juwan Williams. Uh, all these guys, any of them that get cut, are probably going, most likely going to clear waivers, probably end up on the practice squad. They'll probably see some time because of injuries this year with the Patriots. So if you like that player, don't 
fucking crying your Cheerios. You'll probably see him later on. I got uh, one. Winovich. No, he's making the team. Uh, make let, the team let, let me give you uh, the last Patriots question here. Uh, bad, bad run for you here, right today. Uh, the kicking game was oh, a full on competition in week three. We had uh, old balls, Nick Folk out there uh, get a, what was it, 41? 41. And, and uh, uh, Tiddy's good. Nordeen uh, missed himself uh, 54 and uh, hit a uh, extra point in a 40 yarder, right? Something 48. like that. 48. 48 yeah. or 49. Yeah, uh, um, look, I'd like to see the kid. I, I think Nick Folk is battling injury and he's old and he's got that tummy pouch. Uh, he's got a uh, mini uh, dark side of the FUPA going on. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I don't know. You get, you it, honestly, I don't fucking care. I just want him to make the kicks. And or if Nordine, with if you're going to start Cam Newton, who's going to stall out at the 40 every fucking drive, then you need someone who can kick a 55 yard or at least have the ability to do so. And we Nick Folk's. I mean, he made two miracle 50 yard kicks last year that I would not expect him to be able to do again this year, especially coming off injury. So give me the kid holding hands in Philadelphia (laughs) for extra points. For an extra point. Please, God. Nick, praying. Pray with me, Forrest Folk. Uh, Yeah, I would go with the kid, but uh, I, I think that Bill leans towards veteran and um, experience in the kicking game. So at least you can get him on the practice squad too. I think so. Uh, Okay. Real quickly in the NFL, then we're going to move on very fast. Uh, The Texans are making the news uh, originally with uh, Deshaun Watson rumored to the uh, um, Dolphins Dolphins. again, which has been debunked a little bit. Now it's kind of up in the air, whether that's true or not. And uh, other than that, they're just having a full on fire sale with their veterans after training camp. So they're a fucking mess. Yeah, and Deshaun Watson won't waive his no trade clause to Philadelphia, who also wants him. But they want three firsts and two seconds, and they're not budging one bit. They will let him sit out and pay him twenty five million dollars this year to not play a single game. In fact, not even be dressed for a fucking game, but still be on the roster. What a fucking stupid situation! Stupid, stupid, stupid. I almost don't blame the Texans because I don't I, either. I doubt that there's a whole bevy of teams busting down their door to get a guy with 36 sexual misconducts and uh, counting and counting. Up but how hasn't Goodell come out and not put him on the commissioner's exempt list yet? Because there's not enough evidence yet, but there's yeah. enough cloud around him. So he's still he's going to try to wait till I don't I think that he's really going to try to wait till after the court proceedings, which are not until like January, because like it's all like so you're going to miss said, two years. Said, He's going to miss oh, two years. He'll get off. He'll get off in this shit. He'll he already did. No, he already, <laughs> 23 <laughs> times. <laughs> Maybe. He, uh, he'll, pay his, he'll pay his way out of this, uh, as most of these guys do. And there will be no repercussions from the NFL because he's a top five quarterback. And he will gain all of his value back next season. And the Texans will trade him for a haul. That's what their plan is. That's for sure what their plan is. And they'll eat 25 million in the process. Um, and maybe they'll sue him to get that back because of misconduct. But the, uh, but for the rest of the league and the dolphins, no, they're not getting him. They're not getting him. And, and the Texans don't still want pulled. Tua. We went through their schedule, right? They had a couple winnable games. Who? And they went nuts over their fucking, whatever quarterback that they had. They said that he's the next Jesus walking. So, uh, but yeah, that- Bond is Bond yeah. there? No, he's in. Uh, no, it was some kid I've never heard of. But anyway, the I just the, what else made news to me was that they are putting every veteran on the block now. It's like you're two weeks before camp. Did you, like, didn't you have an idea you were gonna suck? You, like, you couldn't have made them available before. I guess I don't know. I think they're a mess. Nick is here. He, he's just trying to strip it all. Gonna he's gonna try to strip it all down and start start again. But I mean, but why now? Looking looking at Miami, if they offered you two firsts and a third, why wouldn't you take that? You know what, Tua? You could flip Tua for something else. Flip him to any one of these teams that's going to want him. Six. No one wants. No one wants no, Tua. No one wants Tua. Uh, well, it'll be interesting. Uh, the Davis Texans are Mills. an absolute fucking disaster. Yeah, they love that kid. Yeah. That, which is, I think, just oh, that was their first him. round pick, right? No, that was their first, no, their first pick. pick. That's yeah. what I mean. It was like yeah. the third round pick quarterback. Yeah. 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 Who's starting? Um, is Tyrod Taylor starting there though? It's supposed to be. That's what I thought. Okay, carry on. Thank you. All right. Queen. Well, uh, let's shift gears here. A lot of football talk there. We're going to shift gears to the Red Sox, who have a full-blown COVID outbreak going on. Kiki Hernandez, Christian Arroyo, Martin Perez. Who was the latest? Oh, uh, Matt Barnes was the latest to go down. So they called up uh, Valdez, who, who last time we saw him gave up nine runs. Nine runs in the 20-day blow, 28-9 blowout to the Rays. Uh, that kid, 
I don't know. I've seen him pitch well, but that nine inning, nine runs in the ninth. Woof. Uh, COVID has hit them, but they continue to uh, scratch them out. Uh, They went two out of three in their last three series. Exactly how I have predicted this path to the uh, playoffs to go. You take two out of three from the from the crappy teams. You lose against the good teams. They're holding their own against the Rays. I fully expect them to blow it tonight. Uh, But two home runs from Devers on Sunday. Um, JD had a big hit the day before, uh, Bogarts is still struggling, but you know, their big bats are coming around a little bit and then one, that one, two. weird fucking play with the kid Munoz that they brought up on the obstruction that gave up the lead on Sunday. You should have swept the Indians, uh, if not for that fucking weird play. Um, I don't know. You're is there. So there are four games with the Rays. Now they're two up in the wild second wild card position on the A's who are, uh, kind of treading water. They got a, a series against the Yankees right now, and you're two behind the Yankees. So your thoughts on the Red Sox position right now, Bill, and um, working their way, just kind of working their way to backdoor into the playoffs as we predicted at one point so they can claim victory. In my I mean, playoffs, I mean play-in game, which they'll lose. Yeah, I mean, it, it helps that, uh, you know, the A's have lost seven in a row now, I believe, so – you know, they're, they're kind of falling off. They're, they're your biggest competition now, but again, the Yankees, you still got your one, one to one against Tampa tonight as we record this, but this is a big series. You have to, you have to take three games. You can't, you can't, you can't split. You have to at least take, you have to win the series. This is a, probably their biggest series. You get swept. You're see, you're done. Cause I mean, your division's out. You know, the, division, the division is out of reach. If you get oh, swept, the division's, the division's gone. Bill. The division, they're eight games back with 30 left. The division's Bill? fucking gone. They're, they're fighting for the wild card not to lose that second wild card spot. They can lose three out of four here. They got the Orioles coming up. They got uh, the Rangers again, right? They got trash still coming, and they got the Yankees one more time. Cleveland again. They got Cleveland again, and they got the Yankees again um, to, you know, if they need to pick up some quick games, maybe they can do that. But I gave you the breakdown. I gave you the breakdown a week ago. They, all, all they got to do is win two out of three against the shitty teams, and uh, they don't even have to split against the rest to play 600 ball and get into the playoffs. And, and the A's are doing – you're right. The A's are doing them a favor by uh, by going into the shitter. Kind of predicted that too. That's kind of the A's MO. Um, Ray, any thoughts on the uh, on the Red Sox as we move forward here? No, nah, second wild card spot. That's all they're playing for. Their COVID outbreak. You know, it's going to be more people going on there. They just got to, they just got to hold water and just uh, make sure they make that second playoff spot. I'll say this: Chris Sale gets the uh, start Jesus. In the game against the Rays. Sorry, Chris Jesus Sale about gets time. to start. First real competition. Let's see how he looks. Is it the immaculate Chris Sale, or uh, is he going to get banged around by a good Rays team? Oh, that shit is so overrated. <laughs> the immaculate inning. We didn't touch on it in the show. So congratulations, you struck someone out. What the fucking do? You struck three guys out, Bill, on nine. Uh, th- uh, cool. Yippee. How bad do you have to be as a team, bad at hitting, to strike out on nine straight pitches? You can't take one. You can't take one, like, slider down. You can't foul off an 0-2 pitch just to stay alive. How fucking bad are you? To do I don't that? know if you guys know this, but hitting a baseball is very hard. It is. I, I, I can attest to that. Dude. So that's probably why they just couldn't do anything with that. It's nice to see, though, like, you know, overratedness aside, but, man, him coming back and that th- that fastball and slider look disgusting. I mean, he does look good. I mean, he, he looks does real look, good. He does look good. It is against crap competition, so it'll be nice to see him against the Rays. This is his last uh, start with six days rest. He's getting back to regular day rest, so we'll see how it all comes together. And if you want to see what a regular – uh, grown overweight man looks like trying to hit an 80 mile an hour fastball check out our youtube page please subscribe and look up ray ray strikes out uh, that was a doozy <laughs> See if I can find that sound. <laughs> uh, let me save the jake paul thing for the after show and give you this quick brewing second jack eichel gets a new agent pat brison of caa hockey who represents Sidney crosby mckinnon uh kopitar patrick kane all the big guys Eichel's getting dealt. They're trying to make this move. The Bruins should, and I believe are still in on it. So just keep an eye out. Keep an eye out for Eichel. And Tuka Rask is only going to play for the Bruins, and the Bruins are happy about that. They are open to having him back after yes. his hip heels on the ninth. I green. just don't understand how you how can you bring him back? You just spent five million a year on a goalie, and you you're expecting Swayman to develop. So where well, is the money that? he's going to pay for less than a million? He's already said it. He's at OP. Yeah, I know, but I just don't understand where it's going to go. You're going to sit him upstairs the whole, the whole year and let him get a game every now and then. Well, he's uh, not going to be healthy till 
early to late to mid spring, right? Like it just doesn't make any fucking sense. I don't even believe it. Here's the only path I'll give you for Tuka Rask is if Swayman's not the real deal. If Swayman uh, in his 10 games, professional games, uh, pulled the wool over his eyes and he's not good, which no one's expecting. He was good in college. He was the real deal when he showed up. Everyone's expecting him to be the kid. But if he hits a wall or he turns out he sucks, then yeah. Then you got insurance and Tuka Rask. So that's it's the not only a bad thought, Rich. It's Athletic. not, but yeah. it, 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 it's a, it's a, I don't know, maybe Tuka's uh, meek enough of a guy that he doesn't fuck up Ulrich and, uh, and, you know, when he walks back in the door because he is Tuka Rask, he's the best goalie in Bruins history, blah, 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 blah. So, uh, you know, you just hope that it doesn't screw with the other goal he's had, which the Swedes and Finns hate kids. each other. Uh, I think there's like a mutual respect, but like a Nordic Viking kind of rivalry. Yeah, well. they, they like fish. Yeah, but the athletic, Rich, the athletic <laughs> yeah. today had, uh, they ranked Swayman uh, as a just a backup goalie as best. Only fish Ray's ever had has been fucking fried in a batter of <laughs> baking other, grease. <laughs> wait, there's other ways to have fish? Yeah. This has been the Summer Mind Sports Show, Fat Tuesday edition, August 31st. We'll see you on Wednesday. We'll be discussing the, uh, the best and brightest young quarterbacks in the league, including your very own Mac Jones. We'll see you then. Bye-bye. 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 Uh, we always, we always do, you know, the mar- martial arts, uh, the fighting, the boxing, everything else. Uh, Bill, you're our fight guy, Ray, yeah. you're, you're our, uh, social media slut guy. So this is up your guys, alley, Jake Paul, Tyrone Woodley, Woodley, uh, he who's collecting social security, I think, right. Old as fuck Tyrone. Yeah. Woodley. He's like 38, I believe. Um, is anyone like, what? Jake I Paul thought he won. won the fight. I thought he won the fight. Who cares? <laughs> I don't care. I Who just care. What did he I win? these. A million dollars. Money. Is, great. Great. Is this is this biggest good? payday ever. Is, is this good for the sport? Is oh. this putting light on the sport? It, just, it seems like it's uh, like fucking celebrity death match. And, and you know, you give me you get get, let together. him fight a real boxer. Yeah. Not these his like age, MMA guys. His size, his skill set. Let's see. Let's see you go box. Let's see you go box. There's real money in that. I would pay the $60 and, like, if it's steaks. Tyson. Give me Tyson. Well, Tyson's going to be a draw anywhere, but... You know. Tyson would hurt him. That's why I want it. That's why I want to see it. Tyson would... These Paul the, brothers are fucking it. That's a, he- that's a heavyweight, though. That's heavyweight. You know, Paul just... You know, he's 190. You think he's still, you think he's still a heavyweight, Tyson? Yeah, he's up there. Yeah, I bet. He lost a shit ton of weight. He's trimmed out. I still think I still think he's... Yeah, he's probably 220, What does Logan Paul weigh? 190. He weighed in at... Uh, yeah, I don't know. I thought it's, Woodley, I, you know, if you look at it, Woodley, I think they're saying it's kind of staged. He was in the ropes, and all if he could have just went after him, but he kind of let up. Dude, it's all – he's paying these guys to throw the fights, and, and it, they're just doing it. They're fucking – they're doing it. It's all just a – like, uh, Ben Askren, his last time he fought, didn't even really train. He was fat as fuck, and he basically took a dive in the first minute. You saw Jose Canseco and Rough and Rowdy took a dive in 30 seconds. Like, these guys are just doing it to get money. Like, Paul's just doing it to get his boxing career. Like, let him fight a Canelo. Give me a guy. Get Let me fight. Let him fight Canelo Alvarez and then tell me that he's a real boxer. Because I guarantee Canelo would knock his ass out in the first two rounds. Yeah, that's, that's the best. That's the, be, that's the best boxer in the fucking world. Hands down. Like, there's no one can beat him. No so one. So maybe he doesn't him. need to fight him. But, um, but, but give me someone who's... Like your age, at least, or your size. Like the, you know, who else? did he? Was Woodley he was one eighty, uh, and he the basketball. And to player? his credit, he was one eighty nine. Was Nate Woodley. Robinson? Nate Robinson. He knocked out a basketball player guy. No fucking training. Come on, come on. You're, that's what oh, I mean. Cool. Yeah. You're, that's, you're, how all, prof- that's how it all started, though. Was that oh. Nate Robinson knockout? I guess the only question I'll ask, and I'm on the outside looking in because I don't watch a lot of this. Is it entertaining? Is the product entertaining? I don't watch them. I don't care. It's fucking sixty dollars. Dude, any did that motherfucker had LED lights in his trunks? How the fuck are you gonna tell me you can fight with LED lights built into your like your uh, boxing trunks? Get the fuck out of here! No, yeah, it would have been. Bill sounds like an old baseball guy. How oh, dare I just, these I guys hate, come I up hate, with lights? 